now is the time of year, unfortunately, where we start getting a lot of questions about soybean diseases. Well, Darren is out in the fields a lot more than I am. He's the soybean expert. So Darren, I'm gonna quiz you real quick. Just give me your top, maybe a couple points on each one of these different diseases. Let's start with frog eye leaf spot. Well, first of all, frog eye has moved further north in our country each of the last few years. We're seeing frog eye now up into the Dakotas. Frog eye is one that could be there from here on out for the rest of the season. So it's not a, well, I'll just spray one time and I'll protect against it. You may be using multiple applications to stop frog eye. What you wanna do though, if you have this year in and year out, is select a variety with more tolerance. Yield damage. Is this the worst one? It's pretty big. It's a pretty big one. And there's been some resistance to some of the fungicides too, like the strobes, for example. So yeah, it, it's one that can take a lot off the top end. Okay, uh, the one I think is the worst is sclerotinia white mold. What are your top couple of points with that? Spray early and often for this one because it's going to start with the first bloom. And every time that plant is under stress, and we have the right conditions in terms of some moisture. This is a fungus, so think about if a mushroom could grow out there, what conditions does it need? It needs some shade, it needs a little bit cooler weather, and it needs a little bit of moisture. So if you're 95 or 100 degrees and dry every day, probably not gonna be a problem for you, but if you're in the 70 to 80 range for temperature and you're getting plenty of moisture and you've got a full crop canopy, watch out. Let's move to some diseases that don't hurt yield maybe quite as much as those first two, but still could be really harmful, pod and stem blight. Well, pod and stem blight is one that pops up later in the season. A lot of times we'll see this after we have uh, pods starting to develop. So it's one where if you're using a fungicide program, many farms are done by R2, R3, that's full bloom to first pod. You're gonna need to spray after that if you want protection from pod and stem blight. All right, a couple late season diseases, Cercospora and Anthracnose. Well, again, let's take them one at a time. So Cercospora, the leaves are gonna look almost leather-like. So there's, there's kind of a different look to those leaves when you have Cercospora. And this is the one that can cause purple stain on the seeds. So if you're raising production seed, for example, you don't wanna see any of it, not even a tiny little bit out there. It can make your seed look terrible and be completely undesirable. But even if you're not raising your soybeans for seed, it's one you're gonna wanna stop and fungicide can be very helpful. Anthracnose? Anthracnose is another one of the late season diseases, often like pod and stem blight. You're going to see this later on. So if you're spraying again at that R2, R3 stage, you're gonna to have to do another application later. Now, of these diseases, again, frog eye, white mold, probably pod and stem blight. I don't care what your yield is, all of those diseases could really, really hurt you, so you gotta spray. With the other ones, brown spot, cercospora, anthracnose, you know, if you're down in the 30, 40 bushel range, I don't know that it's gonna be worth it for you to spray in a lot of cases, but if you're pushing for higher yields, 60, 70, 80 plus, then I think it's gonna be worth treating. The good news with all these diseases is they're fungal. So you can use fungicides. Darren, you have any guidelines there or well, any, the big, any favorites? The big thing is you have to use multiple modes of action because some of these diseases like frog eye, for example, are resistant to the strobes. That would be products like headline and quadris. Well, those are very popular ones. So make sure you're using at least a two mode of action, if not three mode of action product, so you're going to cover yourself. Chances are there's more than one disease happening out in your field make sure you're covering yourself with multiple modes of action. Yep, so I would say if you're after white mold, start with Cobra right before flowering. I mean like right before flowering. At R1, you can start spraying any of the fungicides and you'll see some benefit on a lot of these diseases, but especially white mold and frog eye fairly early. Then you can spray again two, three weeks later, again, two, three weeks later, you literally could go out there three different times with fungicide if you had all these diseases, both on the early side and on the late side. Well, there's certainly a lot of products to choose from and a lot of timings that you could be going out there with. The other thing that I'd say to keep in mind is you're only gonna protect the foliage that's out. So if your plants are still growing taller, any new growth is unprotected. So once you see a substantial amount of new growth, you wanna get another application out there if you're still in that disease window. My last thing I will point out, don't think you're gonna scout for diseases. You can't scout for diseases. What you have to do is say, hey, do I have conditions where this is conducive for this disease? And then you have to spray in advance. That's the only way you're gonna stop these things. Once you've seen them, the yield's already lost. You're too late. Well, it's too bad that disease problems don't just wipe out our weed of the week so we don't have to go out and pull it or spray it. We'll show you how to stop this weed coming up next.